you are.
day is the day we recognize every father. Yeah. But give me just a second to recognize the eternal father.
And I thank you, Brother Mina Winman, as part of our oh, it's open, uh, evangelism moment here in the church. She's yeah. always thinking about us no matter what. And so Amen. we want to thank you for always uh, being in a, in a Christ-like mode. Amen. And, uh, we want to do praise you and honor you for that. All right, we're moving forward. And, and see, I got a little song. Y'all, everybody got a little song. Got envelopes going on in Canada. <laughs> All right, by the time I walk out of here, I better have one in my hands. <laughs> Amen, amen. Let's get, let's get ready, because I know that you all got, got dinner. I'm minister, I'm minister of music. I know you, you, your wife and children are praying for you. Is that right? Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together for that. Amen, amen, amen. And uh, uh, Troy, I know, I know. Y'all got some plan for Father's Day? Amen. Come on, let's praise God for that. Amen. amen. And the rest of you. Um, I hope there's something being planned for you on Father's Day. I'm going home and take a nap because after the first service and then this service, I'm a little worn out. Being away all yesterday, I had to go to, a, had to participate in the funeral, and so uh, I'm praying for that family as well. Uh, there's so much happening in the world, y'all, and I'm saying to you, part of the message will be, I'm saying to you all that we need to be focused, and those of us who are unfocused need to refocus, all yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, about because there's, that because I don't know, God has something in store for the people of God. Yeah. I believe that yeah. beyond the shadow of an eye. He has something in store for the people of God. But in getting there, we're going to have to go through a moment maybe of trial and uh, some tribulation. But nonetheless, we serve a God that has promised to be with us always, even until the ends of the earth. And so we are trusting in the Lord. You trusting God? Y'all yeah. trusting God? Yeah. Are you all really trusting the Lord? Amen. We we'll move now to a moment of giving. In our moment of giving, I want to thank you all, our friends uh, of, of New Hope, as well as members of the New Hope family. You know your responsibility and your obligation to keep this ministry going. Those of you who are friends of New Hope, and I, I appreciate you so much, and those of you who have yet to give to New Hope, I'm saying to you, um, we encourage you to give towards this ministry. Whatever you give is appreciative. We make sure we keep a record and so that you will uh, receive it at the end of the year. But give. Give because there are people, when you have an inclusive ministry, right? When you talk about everybody is welcome. When you talk about we don't, we celebrate the life of everybody whom God has created. Yeah, it can yeah. get a little difficult at times, right? Because not everybody is hanging that way. And that's okay. That's the way we hang. Because that's what God has called us to do. Because we are the church. We are the church. And the Bible says, my house will be a house of prayer for what? All people. And so we're trying to create a moment where everybody feels comfortable. And everybody knows that they are welcome. Not only welcome, are they celebrated here. And sometimes that ministry uh, takes some doing. Amen? It takes some doing. But your finances certainly help us go a long way to carrying out the ministry in which God has called us to do. Our uh, trust will come forth now and tell you how you can give. Amen. It's giving time, church. It's giving time. Let's put our hands together. Let's be thankful that we have something to give. As Pastor said, at, at this church, we encourage 10%. <laughs> but if you are not there, we just want you to be consistent. <laughs> be a consistent giver. So right now, there's a couple of ways that you can give. A few ways. If you move the attention right over there. So you can go to our website, www dot new hope b u c c d c dot org forward slash donate or you can go to our, our cash app which is dollar sign new hope Baptist u c c and then our Giblify, you can find us on there new hope Baptist u c c and then on our paypal it's our email address new hope b u c c at gmail dot com so we're going to give you some time to give. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We want to give with your hearts. Yeah. Cheerful givers. Yeah. Hallelujah.
Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately, he stood up in front of them and took what he had been lying on and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things together. God bless the reading of his word. expected my miracle any day now. Anybody expected a miracle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care if it's over yourself, over family, over friends, over a situation. We know God has power.
expectation. Yeah. My miracle yeah. in a day.
Thank you. Yeah. Troy. And thank you. Rick Robbins, our coordinator. Yeah. Two more. And T, I thank y'all for bringing the message every day. I, 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 every Sunday. I cannot ask for a better. I can't. I can't. I can all, we can always add stuff to it, but I, I, the faithfulness that these folk have given. Yes, yes, yes. The faithfulness that the Bible teaches us that, it, you know, and you know, they don't give me mess. Most of the time. They don't give me mess. And I thank God for that. I mean, they, they, they but I want y'all to watch their life. Watch their lives. The Bible teaches us that if we are just faithful, just, just faithful. Over, there you go. Over, just faithful over a few things, y'all. Just, just committed and faithful over a few things that grow ministry. Now, I'm, I'm not talking about some of us are faithful uh, uh, to things that, that, that don't help nobody. But I, I'm talking about faithfulness that brings about life-sustaining you know, at the, you know, so they get up here Sunday after Sunday and they sing the message and some of y'all sit there and don't know, but y'all don't know what it takes to get to get to this place. And so I thank y'all. I, I really do. I, I really do. Today, I just want to say I love you. And I thank you. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand, praise God. I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to tax your mind too much today. It's Father's Day, and I, I, I got a word for uh, for those of us who've been paralyzed emotionally, mm. physically, well. spiritually, yeah. and psychologically. Yeah. This word is for you. Yeah. You've been if you've been paralyzed, lying flat on your mat, yeah. Yeah. Uh, unable to move, mm -hmm. immobile, unable. Uh, to enjoy the mobility of the time. I've got a word for you and it's going to take me just for a moment. So just hang with me just for a moment. Here in this text, we find a man that has been paralyzed and lying on a mat, right? Y'all saw that? He's lying yeah. Yeah. on the mat. But those of you who came in a little late, and one day Jesus was teaching and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were sitting there and there had come from every a nation every village to Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick, right? Yeah. And as he healed the sick, some men came carrying a paralyzed man. Yeah. Uh, some of us have been paralyzed through life. I don't know what you've been going through. I don't know what you're heading into, but you had your moment of being a paraplegic. You had your moment of lying flat on the back. You had your moment of not wanting to go on. You had your moment whereby you found yourself maybe in the dark despair of your bedroom or maybe psychologically and emotionally you just felt that there was no hope but you were paralyzed to some degree. Yeah. And, and, and this is what, I love this passion because and for the brothers, it talks about brothers, but for the women too, I'm going to be inclusive as possible. It says, some men came and, and lifted him and they understood that there was Jesus who was providing healing for the infirm. The healing for those who found themselves unable to get well. He was healing the sick. Can you break up? Can you say it with me? Jesus was healing the sick. And then that, that the first point I want to make to you is, is that the Bible did not say that this man had faith. The Bible says that some friends of his came and began to talk him to Jesus. Now, the first point I want to make to you that if you are hanging out with people who don't see your potential, if you are hanging out with people who don't understand who you are, Okay. 
capability. They saw, you know, and what they did was, they didn't ask him. The Bible didn't say they asked him. They just got around him and picked him up and began to take him to where he needed to go in order to receive the healing that he needed. Let me say that one more time. Because some of us, some of us, some of us are too tired of hanging out with people who don't have enough sense of who you are to know what to facilitate in you in order for you to receive your healing. I, I know, I know, I've got to be talking to somebody. I, I'm trying, I need y'all to pay attention now. There are those of you uh, that, that, that you are swinging with, hanging with, best pal, your best season, and they don't know the significance of what you need in your most dire moment. I need to be able to come around you and pick you up and take you to where you need to go so that you can be healed. Then you need, you need to start making room for those who do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the first thing I want you to understand. Stop lying around with people who don't understand the importance of who you are, the significance of who you are, and just how valuable you are. That's right. Because the day shall come when you will find yourself lying flat on your back and unable to know what to do. You need friends who gonna come around. And I ask you, do you want to see Jesus? Not that you get permit, but know enough about you to pick you up and take you to where you need to go. All right, well, say that they, that they took, picked him up and they took him to where Jesus was. He was at a house and there Jesus was healing. The church folk were there. The Pharisees and the teachers and as Jesus was preaching and healing and, and teaching they came up against a great crowd the Bible talks about and the men were unable to get the paralyzed men through the front door. My second point, we almost done. My second point is this. Uh, there are going to be moments in time when you're going to be faced with some barriers. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a little complicated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're going to feel like you're going to stop. And now you're going to have two types of friends. You're going to have the first type that's going to say, Mark, I done done all I can. Yeah, yeah. I can't do no more. Yeah, yeah. Look, at I got you here. But the crowd is too thick and we can't get you through the door. Yes, yeah. uh, and, and so we're going to be, I'm going to be praying for you, brothers. Uh, I'm going to be praying for you, but there ain't much more I can do for you. That's going to be your first set of friends. Yeah. They're going to give up too easy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, 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 they. See, some of us see barriers and some of us see complication as an opportunity for God to be more creative in our minds. Uh, but then you'll find you're going to have some good friends, that they only see this barrier as a temporary thing. Yeah. <laughs> come hump, come, come hell or high water, I'm going to get you to Jesus. Uh, come to hell or high water, I'm going to get you to where you need to go. Uh, come to hell or high water, I'm going to fix this thing whereby I'm going to get you in front of the master because there's something that needs to take place, which is a healing for your body. And I'm not going to let it stand in the way. So what did they do, y'all? And you, and, you, and, you, and, you, and once again, if you got friends who ain't gonna go with you till the end, if you got friends at the first sign of a complicated matter, they run and hide. If you got friends that when the barriers begin to be put up, you and they give up on you and, and tell you that no, you want to find some friends that are ride or die. We gonna get there with a determination that no matter what, I need y'all to listen, there's too much going on right now. And, 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 no matter what, you are, you're gonna get your hit. No matter what, I'm gonna get you there. No matter what, we're gonna make this happen. No matter what. See, see, see I know you got friends like that. Yeah, 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 put, yeah. Out some, put out some brand liquor. Come yeah. hell or high water, they're gonna be in your house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, they're gonna they, they, they come, man. They're gonna Uber over and they ain't gotta talk. They ain't got no gas, they're going to borrow money to get to your house. Uh, they, they, don't, they, come, they don't find a way. Yeah. But when it's time for you to be healed, yeah. Yeah. at the first sign of difficulty, they will say, I don't know all I can do. But I'm talking about the kind of friends that you need to surround yourself with that is going to make it possible.
possible no matter what. Through Christ, all things are what? All things are what? I'm here. I'm, I'm, all, I'm here. I'm, I'm looking and searching and I'm going to get my healing no matter what. My friends have to, are determined to get me before Jesus because I'm, I'm sick. I'm, I'm, I've got to be healed. I, 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 I've, got to, I've got to be healed. I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, uh, but, but you know, notice the term friends. Let me say something. I'm going to take a little break here. I got, I've been dealing with some fathers who've been disappointed in their children. Uh, their children didn't turn out the way they wanted them to turn out. Yeah. Uh, and their children, they say, are a disappointment for them because of how God had created them. Mm -hmm. Their children are not the traditional boy or girl that they have been wanting all their lives. Uh, their children are different. And I tell people all the time, different does not mean a uh, deficient. They, they are just different. They, uh, they carry a different, they are wrapped differently. They're, they're Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Y'all said that he has no business 
uh, being a full participant in the society because he's paralyzed and you see him as a sinner. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, your sins have been forgiven. Hey! Hey! Whatever they were, your sins have been forgiven. Now what he is doing, what Jesus is doing, he's throwing it back in their face. I know you all think I'm not supposed to forgive their sins because he's a sinner. He's a paraplegic. He's, he's supposed to tell them to go on down by the pool of Shalom and wait there until the angel come and stir up the water and tell them to jump in and maybe he get his healing that way. But Jesus said, no, your sins have been forgiven. See, Israel, like many of us, we, they were searching to be delivered from the enemy, but nobody wanted to address the evilness that they were doing. Nobody wanted to talk about the meanness that they were involved in. Nobody wanted to talk about how dirty and low down and nasty we can be with one another. You got a whole church running up in here. All these folks wanting to be here. Now before I heal you, I got to tell you about yourself. I got some stuff I need to forgive you for. Yeah, 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 yeah. Before you want to come up in here and talk about being here, you want to be free from wrong, you want to be restored, then I got to deal with you on your psychological and emotional uh, uh, moment. And so he says, then the church folk got made. Uh, How can you heal this paralyzed man? Because see, when Jesus forgives them, forgive this man of his sins, what he's doing is that he is putting this man on the same level as everybody else. Yeah, you know how we are. Yeah, yeah. You know how we are. You, you know, somebody got to be better than somebody else. Yeah, yeah. You know you got folks walking through the door and you know people are looking at people all side out. You know how we can yeah, do it. Yeah, check yeah. Off. And they're not like us and they don't look like us and they don't dress like us. They don't sleep like us. They don't like, you know. So, you know, then you, you say that to yourself so you can be better than those who come in. But that's not how Jesus worked. Jesus says, you know what? I know these hypocrites. I'm going to say to you, your sins have been forgiven. Hallelujah. 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 Don't worry about it. Now, now, now the Bible says that they begin to get upset. Yeah. yeah. So how can you pronounce his sins have been forgiven? You ain't God. And Jesus had to give them a little lesson right. of just who he is. Exactly. Uh, he had to tell them who he is. He had to tell him that I am. I have all authority. I, I can do what I've been sent here to do. Let me say something to many of you all are, are, are languishing in places that don't respect you, that don't celebrate you, that you, 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 you're in relationship, that they don't respect you, they don't, you're in different parts of your life that they don't see you as fully anything other than what they want you to be. And that is sinful. Right? So Jesus said, that's what I'm going to do. I know how to handle y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Be free. Yes, Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Then he turns around and, and, and uh, injury and more insult. He says, not only have I forgiven you of your sin, boom, you're healed. Interaction, he not only sets him free from his sin. I don't know what guilt and sin you've been carrying around with you. I don't know what you've been going through because of your past. I don't know what you've been going through because of your present. But Jesus stands here now to say to each and every one of you, your sins are forgiven. Now, you have the awesome responsibility of whether or not you won't receive it. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. see, some of us love and believe and only see ourselves as sinners. Yeah. They just want to see ourselves as unworthy people. Well. Sinners. But I'm here to tell you that whatever condition you have come into this place on today, God Almighty has said your sins are what? Forgiven. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Can you believe that? Because the the longer you feel the guilt and shame in your life, the worse you become. Yes, God. And I have some friends, but you know, I'm going to hell anyway, so I might as well do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't heard that before. Oh, yeah. God doesn't love me anyhow, so hell with it. Right, 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 right. Y'all, y'all ain't been there. <laughs> uh, I'm destined for destruction anyhow, so I'm gonna just do all that I can do to have a good time 
and not worry about being a productive believer who's been transformed to walk in my purpose. Yes, yes. And so we keep doing dirt, not only to ourselves, but to one another. Oh, yeah. You can always tell a person who's giving up on themselves because they're the nastiest, meanest, dirtiest people you ever want to meet. Not because of anything I've done, but simply because they have given up on themselves. Jesus says, you've been set free. Your sins are forgiven. Now, now, now I need you to believe that you no longer, the newness that you walk in it is going to give you what you need in order to live on purpose. You've been walking in guilt. The church has told you you were paralyzed. And the church has told you you weren't worth much. The church cut off your access to the healing power of Jesus. Now I am restoring it. Ah. And once I restore it, what you going to do with it? Not only am I going to forgive you your sins, I'm going to make you well. Uh -oh. yeah. Not only will Jesus forgive you of your sins, but Jesus will make you whole. Yeah, right. Now what you going to do with it? Yeah, 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 yeah. The Bible says that this man got up running and shouting, thanking God because the church and the community has shut out. I know what it is. I know what it feels like. When the church and the community shuts me out, I know what it feels like. When the church and the community say that I don't have a place, I know what it is when the church and the community come after me because I am different than the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know what it is like to lose family members and friends. Amen. Mm -hmm. I know how that feels. But then God comes along. God comes along and God says to me, you know what? Get rid of that guilt. Get rid of that shame. And you, your sins are forgiven. And not, all, not only are your sins are forgiven, I'm going to heal you from whatever you're going through. And see, once I believe within myself that I've my sins have been forgiven. I believe within myself that I've been restored, that I have a new walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a new talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a new way of seeing life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I now believe what it says when Jesus says, I come that you may have life. Yes. Well, and have it more well, abundantly. Yeah, yes. But too long I've allowed you to be in my head. Too long I've allowed you to be in my ear. Too long I've lived beneath my potential because of what you thought and because of what you said and because of what you believed that I was. But now, my sins are forgiven. Oh, yes, God. Yeah. And I believe. Yeah. Now, don't you understand this? Once you receive your forgiveness and once you've been healed, you're going to have a group on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing everything they can yeah, to pull yeah, you yeah, back yeah, because yeah. they're not accustomed yeah, to seeing yeah. you free. That's right. yeah. They are not accustomed to seeing you healed. I'll end with this story. There was a time in my life when my friends, as long as I stayed in debt to them, mm, yeah. I was cool. Yeah. You understand? As long as I stayed emotionally in debt to them, I was okay. Yeah. Uh, as long as they under, I understood that they were better than me because possibly I believe they were smarter. I remember I was in grad school at Howard University. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, grad school at Howard University, I come up there, I ain't got much. My mother sent me away with all I had, but then I got to Howard University. These folks come from families who gave them cars. They get dressed. My, my jeans would have to last me at least two, three days. They come fashionably dressed every day. And I'm going to tell you how the psychic works. And I'm looking at them and I'm, I'm wondering, well, you know, why didn't I have those things? Why? You know, and then you begin to pretend. Mm -hmm. And you begin, you want, you want, this need for us to fit in is so deep yeah. that we will take portions of our, our, the money we get for class and go buy some clothes just so that we feel, we can feel yeah. good about ourselves and fit in. Yeah. You know, but then, you know, they befriended me and they, they would every day go down to the beach house. You know, some had beach house and we go down there and have parties and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, and I'm like, you know, oh, this is so nice. Like, uh, all the time we went to the beach and said we went to a fishing hole and we went swimming. You know, but this is so nice. But, but I wanted so bad to belong to this group. 
I want you to watch yourself when this comes. You, you see, your, your desire to want to belong to people that mean you no good can get you into a lot of trouble. I just want to belong to this group. I just want to be a part of this group. I'm in Howard University, and you know, I am somebody. I will go home and tell you, yeah, I'm in Howard University. I've been working on my master's at Howard. You know what I, I, my, my, I was I was stroking my own ego and trying to be, but broke as a church mouth. Y'all don't know how broke I was. Sneak behind the student council, and I was president of the student council at the time. And I had to, you know, sneak and go to the food bank and get me some food. And, and, and you know, that could last me out the week. I wouldn't let nobody know. But, 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 but my desire, because of what people thought about me and because of what I needed from them to think about me, I kind of slipped into a mode where I was living a lie. Yeah. I was living as if, as, as if, uh, as if I had what I was living in lack. Yeah. And the only reason why I was living in that because I didn't appreciate what I had. Hey, I had enough to get me through school, but now I wanted more than enough so that I could fit in with those who had meant me no good. And so I would go to Macy's and buy me a sweater that I know I couldn't afford it, and then go buy me some shoes that I know I couldn't afford it, and go buy me a pair of pants. So I, I can hang, not thinking about what was coming down the road, because all bills will be paid. Yeah, yeah. They will come due. Yeah. Those of us who are living beneath our potential uh, and we are, we are listening to the whims and wants of people who don't mean us no good and we are exhausting our resources because we want to fit in so bad but I want you to know all bills will come due. All bills will come due. Those of us who, who want to live inauthentically, you, want, you don't want to be free and live how God has created you, you're trying to fit in. And let me tell you something to the DL folk who are listening to me right now. <laughs> All bills will come due. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can't destroy your life and somebody else's life because you have the desire to fit in, knowing full well you don't belong there, and knowing full well that the people that's dragging you there mean you no good because they're keeping you from living on purpose. They can't mean you no good. Even if they want the best for you, that's not who you are. All bills, all bills are coming due. Everybody's got to pay when those bills come due. And so oftentimes, it is paid by spiritual and psychological means. And you find yourself living in, in a drought and in debt. But Jesus says, listen, I forgive you of your sins. Not only do I forgive you of your sins, I'm making you well. You're now whole. Now go and get up. The, the band got up and begin to live a new life. Yeah. On today, I don't know where you are in your life. I don't know what's going on in your life. But it's time for you to live a new life. Right. It's time enough to receive the forgiveness of your past and be made well and then walk, get up, and live. Anybody want to live your best life? You just want to live your new life. It is possible to live your new life if you receive the forgiveness and the healing that, that God has for you. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Oh, yeah. On this Father's Day, Lord, you've been so good and oh, kind. We, we're receiving, uh, uh, we receive uh, the forgiveness that you gave to this paralyzed man on that day. And we receive the healing uh, physically that you have for us, Lord, because we're going to get up from this place and we're going to live our best life. We're going to live the life that was intended for us to live on point and authentically so that we can be all that we can be. Lord, we love you. Yeah. And so right now we yield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now we just simply yield. Mm -hmm. There's so much that you have for us, God. All we have to do is receive it right now in the name of Jesus. So we receive the forgiveness and we receive the healing. Through Jesus Christ we pray. And the people of God say amen. amen. And then if there's anybody out there or that's viewing us virtually that would like to be a part of this ministry, you want to join this ministry, you can do so now. If you're in here, just raise your hand and we'll come to you. If you're out there, just make a note that you want to belong to this ministry. I will follow up with you. 
More important, I just want you to receive the forgiveness of the Lord and be made whole. There's so much in there's so much in you, each and every one of you. There is so much potential in all of you. As a matter of fact, you got so much going on in you that 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 that, that um, if you would but rest in God, something wonderful is going to happen. Oh yes. And so. Receive everything God has for you. Receive it. Believe it that it's just telling me to you. Oh, and yeah. watch God. For those of you again who want to be a part of the New Hope experience, you got we got a card for you to fill out. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, let me let me let me do this. I want to give everybody a card. I want to give everybody a card. I just want to give everybody a card. I don't want to grab this information anyway. All right? I just want everybody to have a card. And next Sunday, or this Sunday, you can fill it out and give it back. But I just want you to fill it out so we can just have your information. Sometimes I don't like the man I 
Oh, really? 